We are saved for good works, not by good works. The Bible says in Ephesians, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that is not of yourself, but that is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10. That tells us that good works do not save us, but we are saved for good works. Fasting is one of those good works. Prayer is one of those good works. Again, we're not saved by fasting. We are not more righteous by fasting, but we are created for good works. Is there a command in the Bible for fasting? We don't see a clear command or an instruction to fast every day or every week or every single year. In the Old Testament, there was a command to fast one time a year on the Day of Atonement and that was on the Yom Kippur. And they had to fast for 24 hours, abstain from food, afflict their souls and they had to also abstain from working. Later on, Jews added five more fasts as a national kind of a fast and they all had to do with observing different events in the Jewish history. By the time Jesus arrived, Jewish people were fasting twice a week. So when Jesus came, he pretty much uh, corrected a lot of the abuse of the legalism of fasting which we're going to talk about in just a moment. We're going to talk about four wrong ways of fasting and then I'm going to mention to you 14 benefits, scriptural benefits, not my own, not the ones that I came up with but scriptural clear biblical benefits of fasting. And so but before we do that it's important to lay the foundation. We are not saved by good works. We are saved for good works. Another important thing to mention and that is this, as the prayer connects us to God, fasting disconnects us from the world. Come on somebody, drop that in the chat. Prayer connects you to God but fasting disconnects you from the world. In the scripture of Matthew, the Bible says that Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me, Matthew 17, 17. This is speaking about a father who brought his son and the son was demonized and disciples couldn't cast him out, couldn't cast out a demon. So that tells us they had experience but in this case they could not achieve the spiritual victory God had for them. They couldn't break through to the new level and Jesus comes down from the mountain after spending time in fasting and spending time with the father and Elijah and Moses and the Bible says that Jesus says this, he says that you're, you're perverse and faithless generation. But then if you look at the cure Jesus gives, He says this kind shall not live by prayer and fasting because prayer disconnects us. Prayer connects us to the Lord and fasting disconnects us from the world. And so the ultimate reason why we are fasting is so that we can be connected to God. The reason why we are fasting is so that we can be disconnected from the world. So we're praying to connect to God. We are fasting to disconnect from the world. In any area of your life where you are too connected to the world, fasting is important. Now food is the basic one. Food is the foundation of fasting because the definition of fasting in the Old Testament, the, the Hebrew word for fasting means to close your mouth. The Greek word for fasting means to abstain from food for spiritual reasons. So for, to, no, to abstain from food actually that's all that Greek word for fasting means. We add the definition for biblical fasting by saying that fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. But the Greek word means to abstain from food. So biblical fasting is staying away from food for spiritual reasons. Now I understand that it's very popular, it's very trendy right now in America. A lot of churches are doing um, a 21 day Daniel's fast. Now I am not opposed to Daniel's fast. I think it's a great idea. I just don't scripturally, I want to mention that biblically we don't see that it's a fast. In fact doesn't even mention in book of Daniel chapter 10 that he was fasting. He was mourning but the Bible does not say that he was fasting. In fact if you track David's life, it's Daniel's life, you will see that uh, abstaining from meat, sweets and just eating vegetables and that stuff. That was actually part of his diet as well in the beginning of the book of Daniel which you know he declined all the delicacies of Babylon. So that tells me that the biblical 
fast is abstaining from food. In fact, if we go even further, a lot of biblical fast also abstaining from water, which is not encouraged because you can't go without water for more than three days. Now, for those of you on a Daniel's fast, I congratulate you. I want to, I want to encourage, it's hard. It's, it's not easy, but at the same time, keep on going and keep on pressing into God. But eventually work yourself to fasting in the biblical way where you abstain from food and you only drink liquids or water. I know that a lot of people don't do that and they don't preach that partially because not everybody can do it. And secondly, because it, honestly, it's, it's a big sacrifice. It costs a lot, but the fasting, the problem with fasting is this, is the hunger the hunger goes away after three days. The cravings though, they last throughout your extended fast. So I'm going to be dealing today with more of an extended fast, the things that I'm going to share with you. So the hunger leaves quickly, but the cravings do not leave quickly. Partially why cravings don't leave quickly is because cravings are connected to our habits. Cravings are connected to us turning food not just to a place of uh, or, uh, or a means of source or in fuel for our body. Food has become a place of comfort. Uh, food has become a place, uh, something that we use to fellowship, to hang out with other people. And so there's a lot of these connections that are made in our brain toward food so that when you stop feeling hungry, you actually still crave food, not because your stomach wants to eat. Your stomach actually quickly turned to eating alternative um, source of fuel and your stomach is doing completely fine. Your body is doing fine. Your cells are actually eating. They, they are eating fats from the reserves in your body. In fact, your body and your organism, and I'm not a doctor, it's just what I watch what the doctors say, okay? So don't quote me or don't use this um, as a doctoral statement because it's not. It's from what I've heard as I'm studying about the topic of fasting from medical professionals and they say and they teach us that when you're fasting in the first three days your stomach starts going or your, your body, your different organs start going into a repair mode. That's why there's a lot of pressure on your kidneys as well because a lot of toxins are being processed. A lot of processing is done. It's like your body is finally saying, finally you stopped eating so that we can focus on repairing the damages, so we can focus on re recalibrating your body. That's why a lot of people, you know, their skin becomes lighter, they start feeling better after three days, but first three days is hard. Partially it's hard because the toxins are being processed and your body is doing a heavy work of getting all of that caffeine, all of that junk, out and cleansing your system. So I want to encourage you, those of you who are fasting with us right now, I want to encourage you, do not give up. I want to encourage you, if you have not joined the fast, join the fast. If your church is doing it and you decided, no, I can't do it and stuff. So join some kind of a fast, whether it's one meal a day, especially if you're healthy, Daniel's fast, or maybe go seven days without food and then do Daniel's fast. Whatever you do, God will honor it if it's done in the heart that honors God. Amen. I want to ask you for something. Uh, how many of you, you are participating in a 21-day fast with with us or with your local church or with believers around the world in some way, shape and form. Right now during this time, 2022, you are taking part of this fast. Drop number one in the chat. We're not going to ask you what kind of a fast or what you're doing, but just drop number one if you're saying, hey, I am participating. And those of you who are going to choose to participate after this stream, drop number one as well. Drop number one in the chat. We just want to see. So honestly, wow, so many people are participating in the fast. Praise be to God. I saw somebody asking a question, how do I start? You just start. You just start. Okay. Those of you who are participating, wow, almost every single person is participating. Can I give you, just before I share about four wrong ways to fast, can I give you just practically what to do in the fast? What to do in a fast? In fact, I was meditating today and um, came up with personally 10 things to do during a prolonged fast. So let me just share them quickly. I'm not going to stop on them, but I'm just going to give you practical advice on, on that. Uh, what to do during a fast. Uh, number one is that drink plenty of water, but don't drink too much. Uh, number two is that get plenty of rest. 
Number three is that exercise is not recommended if you're doing a prolonged fast without food. If you're fasting Daniel's fast then you can still exercise but if you are doing a prolonged fast without food then exercise is not encouraged. In fact it's, you should rest more. Uh, number four is that supplement your water with drinking coconut water organic coconut water because coconut water contains some sugar uh, some natural sugar that uh, will be helpful to your body in regards to sleep and when it regards to uh, pain in your legs sometimes as you're fasting you actually your um, legs begin to feel like with me what I was experiencing is actually like needles in the back of my legs uh, just very tired on my very tired on my knees and I'm not overweight uh, or one time or actually more than one time I had a hard time sleeping and so um, from some doctors that I've heard and some videos that I watched from medical professionals they encourage drinking some of that like or add a little bit of honey to your water so that it could help add a little bit of sugar to your body and it will help you to sleep. Um, number five is replace your meals with the Word of God, meaning replace your eating with reading of God's Word. Number six is eliminate or restrict media or any other um, worldly attractions, even if they're not sinful. Um, number seven is don't hide your fasting, but don't show it off. I saw somebody in the chat just mentioned that, you know, shouldn't you not talk about fasting? Um, Jesus talked about fasting. He preached about fasting. He fasted and the Bible recorded the fast. So somebody knew that he was fasting. This, his disciples probably knew about fasting. So the idea is not to hide your fast, but not to hype your fast. So a lot of people I've noticed, they try so much not to hide their fast that they're actually drawing more attention to themselves than they would have if they simply just let it go. Okay, so if you focus so much on trying to keep your fast private, you can actually obsess with yourself and your fast more than if you simply just focus on the Lord and don't hype and don't hide. Meaning if somebody asks you why you're not eating, you, you can tell them, you don't have to lie. Okay, and so, um, and when I ask believers right now, this is a believers community, we're encouraging one another. So this is not us showing off. This is not us bragging, hyping up each other. This is us encouraging one another and saying, hey, we're doing, we're in this together. You know, we are in this together. You are not alone. And when you saw all of these ones going on the chat on YouTube, I think it brought an encouragement to you guys that, wow, I am not alone. There is hundreds of believers right now that are in this with me. And for those of you who are just logging in, hey, it's not too late. Join tonight. Join tonight from January 10th till January 31st. Number eight is take care of your physical hygiene. Um, take showers, brush your teeth, brush your teeth more than usual because the fasting bad smell is the worst. And number nine is watch more content on fasting. Like what you're doing right now is so powerful because when you are watching things on fasting, it actually builds you up, builds your morale and builds your motivation. And then number 10, and this is a question that's been asked a lot, is that abstaining from sex is not required for a biblical fast. There is no scripture um, that clearly indicates you have to abstain. There is one scripture where Paul kind of hints about um, uh, abstaining from sex uh, for a short time uh, with permission of your spouse but no other scripture is specifically requiring to abstain from sex because fasting is abstaining from food not from sex. All right so now what I want to do is with these uh, 10 things that I've shared with you what to do in a prolonged fast I want to share with you four wrong ways to fast four wrong ways to fast and the reason for that being is that a lot of people don't like to talk about it but we have to address the wrong way of fasting the fasting that God will not honor the fasting that God will not support the first wrong way of fasting is I call it the flawed fast the flawed fast this is the one that God is not in it the flawed fast. Let me read to you 1st Samuel chapter 14 and verse 24. Cursed is the man who eats any food until evening before I have taken vengeance upon my enemies. So King Saul, he makes a legislation and makes a law pretty much and puts everybody under a ban and he commands fasting. Now the flawed fasting is the one where you are commanded to fast. As Christians we are called into fasting. We are not commanded, meaning it's not a law. Why? Because if it's a law to fast, then by fasting there is no benefits. You don't get benefits, rewards by driving according to speed limit. You only get consequences 
by driving over the speed limit. Legislation works like this. When there's a law, you get tickets for breaking it. You get consequences for breaking it. You don't get rewards for, keep, for doing the law, right? That's exactly how Saul did it. He pretty much cursed everybody who wouldn't fast. And this is a flawed fasting. God had nothing to do with it. So any pastor that commands his people to fast, that threatens his people to fast, that bullies his people to fast, manipulates his people to fast, threatens them or tells them that they are going to suffer and they're not gonna, they're gonna miss, you know, God and everything. That is wrong way of fasting. King Saul did it and God did not bless it. This fast was driven by fear, not by faith. This fast was selfish. It was not spiritual and this fast ignored the timing. This was not a right time to fast. This fast was flawed because the timing was wrong. And why was the timing wrong? Because they should have not been fasting at that time. They should have fasted either before or fasted afterwards. But they, what Saul did is this, is that Saul, he puts all of his men under a ban and the, he makes all of them to fast. And you know, they're all scared, they're weak, they can't fight really well. Jonathan comes in and eats a little bit of honey and Jonathan's like, man, I feel great. You know, this is like coconut water and a little bit of honey in this water. And Jonathan's like, why is everybody not eating? We should, we should all eat and then go and fight. So that means that there's a wrong time to fast. Like for example, if you're pregnant, you shouldn't be fasting. If you're nursing children, you shouldn't be fasting. Like if you are taking a lot of medications, um, you have to consult your doctor. Or if you are like very lean and you, you physically just do not have the ability, you shouldn't be doing that kind of a fast. That is wisdom. That is reasonable service and sacrifice to God. Do not feel guilty about it, okay? God is not forcing it. God is not punishing anybody who's not doing it, but He is blessing those who choose to participate in it. And why this flawed fasting is really bad is because after they finish their fast, the Bible says, they conquered their enemy, they killed animals and they actually ate those animals with blood. For Jewish people, drinking blood was forbidden. And so this fasting is wrong because once you finish that fast, you actually indulge into sinful things. People who compress their, their lusts and their flesh, that's what legalism does. It compresses things, it suppresses things. It like, you know, oh. and then when you're done, you're like, ah now I can do whatever I want and everything and that is the wrong way of fasting. Godly fasting always leads to godly living. Come on somebody, drop that in the chat. Godly fasting leads to godly living. Legalist fasting always leads to loosed living. You become loosed with your conviction. You become, you're not holy. You're not living a holy life because that is a flawed fasting. That's number one. The second wrong fasting is the failed fast and this is the example of David. David had a failed fast. Now why was David, why did David have a failed fast? Because David fasted for something God said is not going to happen. In 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 16, David therefore pleaded with God for the child and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the background of story, David has this thing with Bathsheba and then David um, kills Uriah really bad boy. God and David you know covers it up. David actually gets away with it and then what happens is that a year passes. David doesn't confess his sin. I'm pretty sure his conscience was uh, troubled. I'm pretty sure his heart was condemning him. His relationship with God was broken but he still is a king and Nathan comes in and pretty much drops this like hammer on David and says, dude you are bad. Y like you're wrong and David repents and then God forgives David through Nathan. He says, your sins are now taken away. David's like, well, praise God. And then Daniel, and then Nathan pretty much tells David, uh, yeah, you're forgiven, but you're going to have to pay because the law of sowing and reaping still works. And uh, though you're not going to be judged for your sin, but you're going to be judged by your sin. Did you catch the difference? You will not be judged for your sin because Jesus was judged for our sin, but you'll be judged by your, uh, by your sin. There will be consequences, David. Samson had consequences. Even though he cried out to God, he still was blind, bound, and he ended his life shortly. And David, you will have consequences. I will send a sword. I will send an adversary. I will send an enemy. And then Nathan drops the final word, which is very painful. He says, the child is going to die. That's it. There's no if, buts, um, you know, praying about it. This is not, it's, it's, you can change that. So David, he knows God. He knows God's heart. So David goes into prayer 
and adds about seven days of fasting. And he cries out to God, but God does not respond. God did not honor that fast by responding that fast. Now I do believe that fast has redirected David's heart because when God did not honor it and the child died, God didn't kill the child, okay? David killed the child by his sin. And so we can't blame God for something that we set in motion. But God did not honor the fast of David. Why? Because there are consequences David had to live through and live for. For example, if you are doing things that are not right with God, okay? Now you can receive forgiveness, restoration with your relationship with God. But fasting does not override God's law. Fasting also does not override God's character. Fasting does not squeeze God in the corner and forces Him to be your, like a vending machine. Now He is playing, you know, or He is dancing at your music. God is doing everything that you're telling Him to do. Fasting, in other words, does not move God. You can't move God through fasting. God is not moved because you don't eat. There is no hunger strike that can make God surrender, change or transform. God is sovereign, eternal. Fasting moves us. The failed fast is the one where we're trying to change God by the sheer willpower of denial of food. Now people do that in politics, they go through a hunger strike. In fact, I just saw an article 25 evangelical leaders in the United States are going through a hunger strike so that they can change the voting laws in the United States. There was this guy in jail in India who went through I think 160 days if I'm not mistaken of hunger strike and he actually died because he wanted to change the conditions of people in India and when people heard that he died out of hunger, they actually rallied out of sympathy and they started to protest and then and then Gandhi kind of rose up and he started to fast as a hunger strike to protest and to get their way and they actually got their way. That will work with politics, it will not work with God. Listen to me very carefully. God cannot be manipulated neither by fasting, by tears or by crying. God is God and we have to be changed, we have to mature, we have to change not God. So fasting doesn't change God. So the second wrong way of fasting is when you're trying to change God or change His laws and that not, does not work. Um, number three wrong way of fasting is the false fast. So we've said the flawed fast, we've mentioned the failed fast and we mentioned also the false fast. The false fast it deals in Isaiah chapter 58, it's the one that God ignores. So this fast is the one that God ignores. Why? Because it's the fast that ignores God. Come on, drop that in the chat. The fast that God ignores is the fast that ignores God. If you ignore God in your fasting, God will ignore your fasting. Let's read this. I'm going to read in Amplified Isaiah 58 verse 3. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it, meaning God didn't see it. Why we afflict ourselves and you take no knowledge of it. Behold, O Israel, on the day of your fast, when you should be grieving for your sins, you find profit in your business. And instead of stopping all work as the law implies, you and your workmen should do, you extort from your hired servants full amount of labor meaning God was saying, hey, I'm not noticing that. Now, let me give you the context of that, okay? Because some people kind of read that and uh, I read the Amplified version, so it's slightly slightly different. But the, the, the context of that, let's read the verse in the context of why God expected Israel to fast this particular way one time a year. And that is in Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29, Amplified Bible. It shall be a statue to you forever that in the seventh month, so nearly October, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict yourself and do not work at all, neither native born or the stranger who dwells temporarily with you. So God was saying is this, I want you one day a year on the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, when the lamb is slaughtered, you're fasting afflict your soul, bring yourself in brokenness before God and God is saying this, I want you at that time to do something. I want you to stop working. Do not let anybody work who is working for you. So in Isaiah 58, God is making a reference to Leviticus and He's saying, 
you guys are fasting but you're actually disregarding my requirements for the fast. So this is a false fast. Why? Because it ignores God's Word. God was very clear. You have to break your heart, walk in repentance on that day and you have to stop working. So what Israel did, they continued to work. They continue, their businesses continue to function and God's like this fast, I am not going to tolerate, I am not going to welcome and I'm not going to honor. And then let's dive a little bit deeper about this false fast. The false, fa the false fast is the one that makes fasting mechanical. In Isaiah 58 chapter 5, in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 5, the Amplified Bible says this, Is such a fast as yours that I have chosen? A day for a man to humble himself with sorrow in his soul? Is it, truly, is, is it true that fasting is merely mechanical? Is it only to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? To indicate a condition of heart that he does not have? Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? God pretty much is saying, hey, you're going through the motions of fasting, but you're actually not fasting. You're going through the mechanics of fasting, the ritual of fasting, but you're not fasting. God says, yes, you threw the ashes, but your heart is not. Like, don't put ashes on your head if your heart is not mourning or in sorrow or in grief or in repentance or you're not contrite. God says, don't rent your garments if your heart is not rent. And so God's like, I don't care about the rich ritual. I don't care about the mechanics. I don't care about the, mo the notion. I am looking for the heart. Now, the fast that God wants the true fast is the one that leads us to stop hurting others, to help the poor, to stop avoiding a family and stop pointing finger at other people and to take away harsh speech. Now listen to this very carefully. I have not heard this taught and I myself have never preached on this when it comes to fasting. In fact, I'll be very honest with you, I've avoided this verse in the Bible, okay? Because I always felt that there was a sense of it's attacking the issue of fasting but in reality it's not my friend. It's not. It's the God is saying is that it's a false way of fasting if I'm ignoring the following things and listen to these very carefully. And this is in Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 and verse 7. Amplified Bible again. Rather, is not this the fast I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free that you may break every enslaving yoke is not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked that you cover him and you not hide and you and that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh and blood and let's look at another verse and that's verse 9 of chapter 58 of Isaiah. If you take away from your midst the yoke of oppression, wherever you find them, the finger pointed in scorn and every form of false, harsh and unjust and wicked speaking. In other words, what God is saying here is this. He says this. He says, I want you while you're fasting to, yes, don't make it mechanical. Don't make it just a notion of fasting. Don't ignore my word, what my word is saying about fasting and for that day it was not to work. That is not the instruction we're given for fasting by Jesus Christ. We're given instructions the opposite. We actually say, Jesus says, don't mourn, don't cry and wash your face and anoint your head. So our instructions are slightly different. But then the Lord goes after this issue, social justice. He's going after pointing fingers. I am better than you. He's going after speaking harsh, unjust, mean words to other people. He's going after us enslaving other people and holding other people hostage to something. Now, in our culture, we don't have slaves, okay? But it's still possible to be able to hurt other people with your behavior and actions. It's still possible to withhold blessings and love from other people. And then he goes a step further and he says, even though maybe you've stopped doing the bad, but he's like the sins of omission, meaning are you helping the poor? Are you clothing the naked? Are you bringing the homeless home? Uh, homeless to your house and then you think God would stop, uh, Isaiah would stop there. He actually goes even further and he says you're ignoring your own family. So when you're reading that, what that tells you is this, is that as you're fasting, 
you have to also watch for the poor. Your generosity cannot be disconnected from your fast. Your charity should not be disconnected from your fast. That means you can't walk around mean and fast. Now it's possible first few days you can get cranky and moody, it's fine. But you can't be nasty and fast. You can't be rude and fast. You can't hate people and fast. Fasting and forgiveness has to be linked. We have to combine them. That means that we have to release unforgiveness. We have to release all kinds of godless attitudes that we have toward other people as we're fasting. This is the true fast. The false fasting is you behave however you want to, you speak however you want to, you keep pointing your finger at other people, you ignore your family because you're fasting. So it gives you a license to be a jerk. But the Bible corrects us and says, if you do that, I will not care, pay attention, notice or do anything about the fast that you're doing. You're only going to lose a few pounds but you're not going to gain any spiritual blessing. Is this helping anybody? If this is helping somebody, if this is instructive, motivational and inspiring, would you drop number one in the chat? Even if you are re-watching this, hey I just want to welcome you if you're just re-watching or just tuning in. I want to welcome you. We're talking about an extended fast. We're talking about four ways not to fast uh, and we're talking about 14 benefits of fasting. So we mentioned the flawed, we mentioned uh, the failed, we mentioned the fake fast and now the last wrong fast and this one is the fake fast and this is the one the hypocrites do it's the one that God will not reward and it's the one that Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 6 verse 16 17 and 18 and let me read to you in the New Living Translation and when you fast don't be like hypocrites when you fast don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do for they try to look miserable to people who will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is only reward they will get. Verse 17, but when you fast, calm your hair and wash your face. Verse 18, that no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private and your father who sees everything will reward you. So the problem with this fake fast is that two problems, the method and the motive. The method was this, they were pretending to be sorrowful when they were not. And also they did not maintain basic hygiene. The motive was that they were trying to draw attention to themselves. And Jesus is pretty much telling us, I know that in the Old Testament you have to mourn and put ashes on your head when you're fasting. But Jesus says, I don't want you to go and do like that. If you're heartbroken and you want to throw ashes on your head, go ahead. But you can, Jesus is saying, I, I don't care about the show of your mourning. I want your heart to be broken. If you're truly broken and repentant, it will come out in your tears. It will come out in your confession and repentance. You don't need to rip, rip your garments. You don't need to go in wailing on the street. Uh, just, just close yourself in your closet and just weep to God, cry out to God. God's like, don't make a show out of it. And then Jesus was saying, hey, uh, put, on, put on some makeup, uh, calm your hair, wash your face, uh, brush your teeth, meaning take care of your personal hygiene. And the Lord was also saying, hey, don't hide your fasting. Jesus wasn't saying here that we have to hide our fasting and keep it so private. No, He was just saying don't hype it. Don't make it obvious. Don't walk around and blowing a trumpet. Hey guys, I'm fasting. No, live normal and don't make it obvious that you're fasting. And so, and I love the fact that Jesus at the end said, He says, God will reward you for fasting. Guys, God will reward you for fasting. God wants to reward you for fasting, not punish you for not fasting. Okay? God wants to reward you for fasting. That reward will be His presence. That reward, as we're going to look at right now, 14 rewards in the Bible that will come into your life as you fast. But God promises to reward you. Even if you don't have much time to pray during the time of fasting, maybe you didn't have time, a lot of time to read the Word during the fasting, God will still reward you. Now it's good to pray, it's very important to do charity as we have seen in Isaiah 58 but the ultimate reward will come for your fasting. So the very idea of you going hungry, hungry for God, thinking about God, uh, focusing your thoughts on God, God's like, I got you. I will reward you for seeking me. 
he who comes to him must believe that he is a rewarder of those he that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him hebrews 11 6. now let's look at are you ready for the 14 benefits of fasting get your notes ready get your pen ready and we're going to go through them right now if you're ready drop number one in the chat if you're just tuning in on, on youtube hey could you do me a favor could you just pause and just hit that like button so that we can break a thousand likes today before this stream is over it will mean a lot and those of you on facebook hey click that share share again i know maybe you've shared it share it again and thank you those of you on instagram and on tiktok you're engaged and watching your uh, comments 14 benefits of the fast. Let's use the scripture right now for this. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 8 and verse 9 and I'm going to read again from the Amplified Bible. Then you shall make, then shall, so word then indicates. So after the true fast, remember how I've talked about the false fasting when you are avoiding the poor, when you're avoiding your family. The false fasting is when you are also um, uh, holding people hostage or uh, holding people in bondage when you are not uh, you know when you're disobeying God's instructions and God's word and so that's the false one but God says when you fix all of that meaning when you do it right then come on somebody drop that in the chat then then meaning after the fast after you do it right you do it biblically so the, these promises, my friend, they apply to everyone, I believe, who is fasting biblically, who is fasting truly. Then shall your light break forth like the morning, and your healing shall spring forth speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And then you shall call and the Lord will answer. And you shall cry and He will say, I am here or here I am. So these from this verse alone, we see already five, but I'm going to highlight four. The first one is your light will break through. Your light will break breakthrough. This is what happens during fasting. Number one, if something happens with the light of God inside of you, it breaks out. You will feel that a sharp um, alertness to the Lord, being conscious of His presence. It's not that God becomes closer, it's that you become more aware. Why? Because this, this shell life, this shallow life begins to kind of wear off as you break through. It's kind of like when the airplane goes through the turbulence and then hits that 30,000 feet flying altitude, you know, and it's smooth sailing. And it doesn't even feel like you're in the air. And that's how it is. Your light breaks through. Your light, the light of Jesus breaks through the layers of the flesh, the layers of the soul, the layers of the world. And you feel, you see, and you sense a personal, private spiritual breakthrough that's so good number two he says your healing will spring forth speedingly so that's number two your healing physical healing begins to spring forth in your body now there are testimonies of people experiencing physical healing through fasting I've watched in the last, uh, yesterday in fact, I stayed up with my wife and we watched different testimonies and doctors talking about what fasting does to your physical body. It was remarkable. I'm, I'm watching those and I'm thinking about this verse that I'm about to share with you, that I'm sharing with you right now, that your healing, God says then, when you do the fasting biblically, your healing will spring forth. Meaning, see a lot of times guys, Healing comes from God, but healing can also come from your body. Your body can repair itself. Healing can also come from doctors. They remove sickness and your body quickly recovers itself. God promises that when you do fasting right, healing will spring forth. There are sicknesses and diseases that you 
we need to fast to get cure and healing from. I'm not saying as a doctor this, I'm saying this as a Christian and as a pastor. I have a personal testimony. Okay, for the last two months, I have had a challenge with sleeping. Partially is because I'm not sure if this was still a residue of a fever that I had, but every time I would go to sleep, I would have running nose. And I would get such a clogged up nose that I wouldn't be able to sleep at night without spraying something into my nose. And then I still had to wake up again to spray it because I couldn't breathe. I would be breathing through my mouth and my mouth would be so dry. And this has been happening, I remember, for about a month already. Okay, and my wife can testify of that. It's been very difficult. I've asked my intercessors to pray, but I really felt the Lord putting into my heart and saying, I want you to fast because number one, this could be spiritual. And number two is that you, uh, need, um, you need that healing. So it's not sleep apnea. I don't have a problem with sleep apnea. It's a problem with my, with my nose. And so as the fast started within about a second day, I started to notice a change. And last night was the first time that I slept without spraying anything, and anything into my nose and I breathe normally through my nose and all of that clogged up is, is gone and I feel different. I feel completely different today and I know that it's going to progress. I know people who had even different problems with their stomach that after the fast they get healed. People who had different issues. So what I'm saying, I'm not saying that if you have a sickness, don't go to the doctor and go into fasting. Do not hear what I'm saying. I am not saying that. What I'm saying is that as you're fasting for spiritual reason, as you're fasting for God, there are illnesses and there are troubles in your body. The Lord promises to begin to cause healing to spring forth in your body. Number three, He says your righteousness will go before you. So this is speaking about not that your righteous standing with God, but it's speaking about your righteous living your righteous living, something will happen about your righteous living. I really believe that fasting has a domino effect. As you begin to fast, your life changes afterwards. See, godly fasting leads to a godly living. The Bible says your righteousness will go before you, meaning it will lead you to peace. It means that you will begin to live a better righteous life. When you fast, you're not better than others you become better than you. Come on somebody. Fasting does not make you better than others. Fasting makes you better than you. Come on, drop that in the chat right now. Fasting does not make you better than others. It makes you better than you. Your righteousness will go before you. Number four, the glory of God will be your rear guard. That means that God will protect you from behind and He will protect you from the front. A lot of times we have things in our past that are chasing us, things in our past that are trying to catch up to us and the Lord tells us as in Exodus 14, 19, Israel had God's fire, had God's glory in their rear, in their behind them and it was protecting them from Egypt. The Lord is saying then after you fast your light will break through, your healing will come in speedily. God says your righteousness will go before you and the Lord promises that my glory will guard you. You will become more aware, more conscious of His presence around you. You will feel that if it's godly fast, focused on the Lord, the, the, the awareness, this appetite, this hunger, these thoughts going toward God throughout the day. Lord, I love you. Lord, I'm hungry for you. Lord, I need you the awareness of being surrounded by the glory of God. And then he actually says there, and I don't have this in my notes, it's going to be a little bit side, but we're not going to put as part of the points, is he says, then you will call upon me and I will answer you. That means there is a quicker response to your prayers. There is a communication, a conversation type of your prayers instead of like a one way where you just call. The Lord says, I will answer. I will heed your prayer. I will actually respond because now you're broken, you're repentant, you're contrite and I will respond to your prayer. Man, this is incredible. This is just four benefits of the fast. Let's go deeper. Before I break down the rest of the 10, let's read the verses that I will base these reasons for fasting on. 
in Isaiah 58 verse 10 and 12, the Amplified Bible. Then shall your light rise in darkness, and your obscurity and gloom become like noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy you in drought and in dry places and make your bones strong. Then you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called repairer of the breach and restorer of the streets to dwell in. That's just so much. Let's go through them right now. Number five, your light will arise in darkness. One translation says your light will expel darkness. So not only your light will break through, your light now goes to work. Your light now begins to drive out darkness. Come on somebody. There's a, like almost like a self-deliverance beginning to take place where light begins to arise in your darkness and begins to expel and drive out darkness. This is incredible. It's almost like self-cleansing, self-deliverance that is beginning to happen. This purification that is beginning to happen. Number six, your darkness will become bright. This is crazy. Your actual darkness will be transformed into a noonday. Now, every one of us has some darkness, okay? Every one of us has some dark um, habits, maybe patterns, thoughts, attitudes, um, certain areas of our life. We, we need help, okay? The Bible promises that then when we do fasting the godly way, the biblical way, God not only will cause my light to break through, my light to, to rise up and conquer darkness, not only His glory will come, not only my healing will spring forth. He says, my darkness, meaning areas I'm battling with, will be transformed into noonday, meaning into something bright. He will take my failures, He will take my struggles and He will actually give me sufficient grace in those areas. And that's incredible. So I don't have to fight alone. I'm surrendering and God does the fighting. As I'm fasting, He begins to fight. He begins to take the darkness and replace it with light. That's just... <sighs> Number seven, the Lord will guide you continually. This is huge. We all need direction from God. We're all waiting. God lead me, guide me, give me divine strategies. And the Lord says then, so after the fast, He will guide you. He will lead you sometimes in the fast and then He will guide you after the fast. You will sense God's suddenlies. You will sense God guiding you, guiding your steps and guiding your paths. Number eight, the Lord will satisfy your soul in a barren land. He will feed you in parched regions. What does this mean? This means that God will take care of you even when things get hard. Life will not be easy after the fast. Things are not just gonna, you know, all of the things are gonna be vanish, bad things will vanish. No, things will still, be, life will still be hard, okay? Um, world will still be evil, but you will be stronger. And God gives you this promise. He says, I will sustain you. I will satisfy you even in the dry season of your life. Even in the pandemic, come on somebody. Even when the world is going crazy. Even if everything around you is going bad. God says, I will keep you, sustain you and feed you. Even if the church you are in, the region you are in is so dry. It's just so bad. God's like, I got you. I will feed you in the dry season. Come on somebody. That's a good time to give the Lord some praise right now. Benefit number nine. The Bible says the Lord will strengthen your bones. So not only healing springs forth, but now the Lord says, I will strengthen your immune system, your respiratory system, your muscular system. I will strengthen your bones. I want to strengthen your frame, your body. I want to strengthen your health. This is incredible because God is not just the God of healing. He's also the God who encourages us 
to be healthy and he wants to help us in our health and fasting is one of the ways that that happens. Number 10 and now God begins to describe your identity. I love this, okay? Because no matter what you guys, how you feel about yourself, I want to tell you when you're beginning to fast, God pretty much rewrites of kind of like who you are. He says, you will be like a well-watered garden. That's amazing. So you're not just a tree, you're a garden. Okay, as a Christian, all of us as Christians, the righteous is like a tree. But when you fast, you're like a garden. Mm, that's a heavy heavy right there. Come on somebody, drop that fire emoji. When you fast, God says, you will be like a garden. Now what does gardens do? They produce fruits. Gardens, they produce vegetables. Gardens, they produce shade. Meaning they, pro they feed others. When you have a garden, you get food from it. So God is saying, I will make you a blessing for somebody. I will make you not just a little blessing. I'm going to make you a garden, multiple trees. There will be multiple gifts and venues and opportunities through which you will be a blessing to others. Now this does not mean you will be on a large scale, but there will be a supernatural blessing from God by making you a blessing. See, I've mentioned, you know, first nine things which blessing me, God is blessing me, God is strengthening me, breaking through, self-deliverance, healing, you know, the glory of God, my prayers are being heard but then God starts shifting and He's like, I'm gonna give you so much of my grace, it will overflow. See, you get filled for you but you overflow for others because once you overflow, the water flows out of the cup. So the cup is filled but now everything else around the cup is filled and God said, I'm gonna make you a well-watered garden. Benefit 11, God says, I will make you ever-flowing spring. Whoa! So not only you're a garden that bears fruit, you actually become a spring that carries water. That means that there's a sense of refreshing that is going to be about you. God is going to use you to bring refreshing to others. So this is not just about you now. God is saying this is going to be about the world. I'm going to use you to refresh others. It could be through a prophecy. It could be through healing. It could be through song. It could be through a word. It could be through a small group that you are leading. It, God will make you a river of blessing to other people. He will make you a garden. Come on somebody, drop, drop that in the chat. I receive if you're believing that this year is not just about you. This year is not just about God bless me, God heal me, God deliver me, but God use me. Come on somebody, God use me for your glory. God magnify your name through me. God let people be healed, delivered and saved and encouraged, inspired and fed through me. If you believe in that, drop number one in the chat if you want God to use you this year. Fasting is the biblical way for God making you a garden and a wellspring, a spring, well watered spring. A lot of people want to be used by God but they don't realize in order to be used by God, you got to be filled by God. You got to have something to give. But we ourselves do not have that unless the Lord gives it to us. And when you begin to fast, something happens. The Lord begins to make you into a garden. You may not feel like you're a garden right now. It might not look like you're a garden. You don't have the connections. Maybe you don't have the education. You don't have the upbringing. Maybe you don't have what it takes. But do you have what it takes to fast? begin to fast. Then the Lord says, I will make you like a garden, like a well-watered spring. Number 12, are you ready for number 12? You will rebuild the perpetual ruins, meaning you will rebuild deserted, deserted ruins of your cities. So not only I'm a refreshing by God, I'm used by God to be a refreshing. Not only I am like renewing by bringing fruit to other people. But God's like, I want to use you to rebuild the ruins. I believe that many of you watching right now, maybe you have had ruins in your life. Things that have been ruined. Things that will take a long process to rebuild. Maybe a relationship that's been broken. 
maybe health, perhaps a financial life that's been broken. And God's saying, I will use you now to rebuild perpetual, meaning these ruins have been consistent. They've been as long as you can remember in your life. I want to restore. You You don't know the last time you've been without debt. You've been without worrying about finances. You don't know the last time you didn't, you went without a few days without medicine. Or maybe you don't remember the last time you were not constantly battling with demons. And God's like, I want to rebuild. I want to use you to rebuild all ruins. Pretty much, I want to fix that issue. Number 14, you will rise up the foundations of many generations you will raise, you will build on the foundations of many generations. Now, for most of us watching this, we have been blessed to have a good foundation set by our parents, okay? But God wants you to raise that foundation for your next generation. God wants you to build on that foundation for next generation. Now, some of us watching this right now, you are the first believer in your family. If you are the first person who has given your life to Jesus in your family, drop number one in the chat. If it's your, you're the first one in your family that is to commit it, committedly follow Jesus Christ. God will use you because of your fasting to build a foundation for your family, for your children, for your next generation. You will lay a foundation actually through your fasting, actually through your prayer. Maybe your family doesn't serve God. Maybe your family serves other gods. What you're doing for your family, for your personal, your wife and your children is you're laying a different foundation that your children will build on. You're laying a different foundation that your children will go off of. And that is happening through the fasting. God is saying, I am going to cause you to renew. I'm going to cause you to be a refreshing. I'm going to cause you to rebuild. And the last one is number 14. You will be called bricklayer of the breach, restorer of the paths, repairer of the breach, restorer of the streets you dwell in. Pretty much you will become known as a rebuilder and a restorer. In other words, God is saying, People will know you differently than how they knew you before. We're not fasting to be known. This is not a popularity. We're not fishing for popularity. But God is promising that when we are fasting, we will be known by a different name than the one we were given at our birth. We, were known, we will be known by a different name than the one our friends gave us, our family members gave us. And this new name will be connected with what God has done in our life. A repair, rebuilder. Meaning, people will call you by a different name. Your name might be a doctor, you might be a professor, you might be a janitor, you might be a truck driver. But when you begin to fast, these professions, they kind of go on the side. And God begins to give you a new identity that you are an evangelist, you are a demon slayer, that you are a restorer, you are a healer, not in yourself but in Christ, Christ through you, that you are a repairer, that you are a blessing, that you are somebody that God uses. God's like, they will know you by different name. They will know you by a different title position. Why? Because of what I'm doing through your life in Jesus' name. If this has been a blessing to you, come on, drop that fire emoji in the chat. We're almost breaking a thousand on YouTube. It's 977 people watching us on YouTube, just on uh, on my YouTube, uh, not even including Hungry Gents. And so for some of you from Instagram, just jump on over to YouTube. We want to break a thousand before we close today. I want to... <coughs> I want to take a moment. We're, we're going to get ready to pray. I want to be praying for people that are fasting. I want to pray these blessings right now. These promises over each and every one of us. And so if those of you on Instagram or on uh, TikTok, jump on over to YouTube. Um, and those of you on Facebook, stay right there. Let's begin to pray in just a minute.
and so we're gonna wait for some people to jump on over from Instagram and once you jump from Instagram to YouTube let us know say hey I'm from Instagram and YouTube and so we're gonna be praying right now that these benefits God's gonna begin to activate in your life I want to pray that the Lord is going to bring that light that self-deliverance that God's gonna bring that healing into your body into your life I want to pray that God was gonna that there's gonna be a, the glory of the Lord visiting your life in this season of 21 days for those of you who have not fasted and you were just kind of sitting on the on the fence and you were not sure I'm pretty sure this video is already got you overboard uh, or on the other side I want you to just hey cross over to with us let's do it together if you're not able to do a full fast you know do some kind of a fast a Daniel's fast or you know maybe abstain from something if you are nursing or if you are a um, pregnant woman uh, or maybe you're you're facing some other challenges in your health right now and you're just not able to fast God understands that God sees your heart and he still wants to bless you begin to pursue the Lord you know this fast is also going to cover you as we're fasting together hundreds thousands of believers probably millions around the world are doing the 21 day fast right now some people are doing the Daniel's way some people are doing it you know a complete one or, or a full one the blessing is going to come upon you even if you jump halfway through God's blessing will come upon you in Jesus mighty name and those of you that are on YouTube we are almost one person away from breaking a thousand hey could you do me a favor and hit right now thumbs up let's break a thousand likes on YouTube uh, let's so for those of you on YouTube can you just help me and hit that thumbs up let's break a thousand likes on YouTube okay let's pray let's ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen us I want to pray for those people that are going through right now maybe um, cravings and uh, maybe it's hard for you during this fast maybe just kind of different things are surfacing all these toxins are being cleansed and you just need help let, let me pray with you right now and then I'm going to pray that God will activate the blessings of the true fast in Jesus name Lord I pray for every believer that is watching me right now that is watching this live stream that is joining with other believers on YouTube on Facebook on Instagram and on TikTok Lord I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you will strengthen my brothers and my sisters Lord I pray that you will give them grace for the journey for the journey of a 21 day fast Holy Spirit I ask you that you will give supernatural grace that we will not be able to brag boast and say oh this was just me I was so disciplined but that we will be able to testify I felt God's grace I felt supernatural strength Holy Spirit I ask you for that supernatural strength for my my friends my brothers and my sisters I pray for those who have never fasted that they will be able to do it I pray for those who have never completed a fast. I pray for a mindset and the attitude of a finisher. Lord, I pray that we will be like the Lord Jesus Christ, that when He was dying, He didn't say, I quit, but He said, I finish. That we will go to the end. That we will not just hit three times like that king and stop, but we will hit seven times. That we will we'll go all the way. Lord, I pray that You will help us to conquer the cravings of the flesh because that's all there is Lord help us to conquer that help us for your light to break through the shell life the that that shallow fleshly carnal thing Lord God help us to subdue those cravings to the will of our spirit in Jesus name Lord I pray for those that are battling sickness I pray for those that are battling demons I pray for those that are battling confusion they don't know what to do with their life they don't know where to go they don't know what the next thing to do they feel overwhelmed I pray for those God that have inner darkness precious Holy Spirit I pray for those right now that feel like they struggle in their walk with you for those who this year they feel like I want to be a blessing God I want to be used by you in a greater way in a way that I've never been seen before in my life I want to be that garden I want to be that Lord I pray as we fast God I stand on your promise and I ask you may your word be true in our life may the light spring forth may the righteousness go before us Heavenly Father 
in the name of Jesus, I ask you, may our healing spring forth. Healing in our lungs, healing in our brain, healing in our skin, healing in our bones, healing in our blood, healing in our nervous system, healing in our respiratory system, healing in our digestive system, healing in every part of our body. Let our bodies heal in Jesus' name. Let the glory of the Lord surround us in the front and behind us in Jesus' name. Come on, agree with me right now. Just drop that I receive in the chat. Lord, I ask you that your word, I pray your word over viewers and those that will be re-watching. In the name of Jesus, that they will be rebuilders, that they will restore the ruins in their family, that they will build a proper foundation for the generations to come. Lord, I pray that you will make them a garden. I pray let this be the year not just where we are spiritually blessed, we are physically blessed, but that let this be the year where we are a blessing with our finances, with our words, with our gifts, with our talents, with our spiritual gifts, that we are a blessing through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that we are a blessing, our home will host gatherings of people, that we will become a spring of water for so many others to be refreshed, that we will be a blessing to others, that our name will change, our reputation will change, that people will call us by what you are doing in our life. I pray your promise over my friends. I pray your promise over brothers and sisters. I pray your promise over our spiritual extended family right now, Lord. May your word be true. May your word come true in our life this year. May this fast bring spiritual benefits, God. May biblical fast bring biblical blessings. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we don't brag. Lord, we don't hype. Lord, we don't exalt. We don't focus on our fasting. We want to focus on You. We want to use this fast to focus on You. We don't want to focus on the fast. We don't want to use You to focus on the fasting, God. We want to use the fast to focus on You. It's all about You, Jesus. It's all about You, Father. It's all about You, precious Holy Spirit. Give us the strength to endure. Give us the strength to complete and help us also when we finish the fast to live better with our health choices, to live better with our entertainment choices, to live better with our free time spending choices, that we will live in a way that will carry a residue, that will carry a consequence from this fast in a positive light on our godly, holy living. May the people that are watching who have ministries May their ministries go to another level in Jesus' mighty name. I speak right now over every person that is watching, Lord God, that their ministry will go to another level. For those who have don't have a ministry, let their ministry begin this year. Even if it's something small as serving at the church, even if it's maybe something small or maybe it's not as popular or doesn't give them a shine on the stage, but let their ministry begin this year. For those who have ministries, Holy Spirit, I ask you, as we humble ourselves, that you will cause our ministry to become a garden. Not something that is dry but well watered garden. That we will become springs, not a dry brook but a spring, well spring for other people. Spring that will flow with water for others. In Jesus mighty name. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Lord. 